hi guys in this video i'm going to show you on how we're going to perform fast Fourier transform or fft in matlab but before we proceed with the coding let me give you a brief explanation about what is fft fast Fourier transform algorithm it's an algorithm where we use to convert the time domain signal into a frequency domain signal let's say in one simple example we have a time domain signal all right this is time axis we have a sinusoidal signal this is our information okay let's say we want to determine what is the frequency of this signal how are we going to do that in this case it's going to be simple okay let's say in a complicated signal where we have more than one frequency it's going to be very hard that's why we're going to use fast Fourier transform to find what is the frequency that present in the time domain signal okay when we perform fast Fourier transform okay we use the function in MATLAB fast Fourier transform what we're going to get we're going to transform the time domain signal into frequency domain signal the x axis is going to be frequency domain so in this case in the time domain signal we're going to have only one peak that going to appear on the frequency domain why is it so because we only have one frequency that appear here let's say our signal okay corrupted by white gaussian noise which always have the high frequency component so our signal has been corrupted by the red color signal okay in this case when we proceed with the fft we instead of having one peak now we're going to have another peak appear on the high frequency high frequency scale f high so initially what we have we have f supposed to be f low all right now we can clearly see that instead of having only one frequency now we have a two frequency okay how we can retrieve back the original sinusoidal signal without the noise what we can do we can apply a low pass filter a filter where you're going to get only the low pass and it's going to eliminate the high frequency component all right what's going to happen is we're going to have when we apply the filter here we're going to apply the low pass filter all right what we're we going to have we're going to get back only the low frequency component all right so we're going to eliminate the high frequency component okay we're going to attenuate the high frequency component parts so after we have the frequency domain we can apply the inverse pass Fourier transform and retrieve back our original the time domain signal as simple as that all right okay without any delay let me proceed with the MATLAB coding okay okay since we are working in MATLAB okay we need to work in the sampling form so we need first thing is a sampling frequency we name it fs and we're going to give a value of 1000 hertz the sampling frequency according to nyquist should be at least twice higher the incoming signal okay this is our sampling sampling frequency all right after that we must have a sampling period it's supposed to be one over fs okay this is our sampling period or this is also our time step time step of what from one sample to another sample in the time domain signal after that we must assign the duration for the signal dt the signal is supposed to start from zero okay what is the distance or what is the time from one sample to another sample going to be ts as we assigned previously then we're going to assign what's the duration of the signal let's say in example in this example going to be two seconds minus with one sample okay all right what else okay in this example i'm going to assign okay before that let me put a comment there it's easy for you then 
uh, signal duration all right okay in this example we're going to have three different frequency we give a name f1 equal to 10 hertz f2 equal to 30 hertz and finally f3 equal to 70 hertz all right so for that i'm going to create three different sinusoidal signal in mathematical form we can represent the sinusoidal signal as simple as y equal to a sine omega t or we can assign 2 pi f t plus theta theta is the phase shift let me assume this our case theta going to be zero all right so now we can write y let's say i have i'm going to have three different signal y1 equal to the amplitude let's say an example here going to be 10 multiply the sine 2 multiply pi multiply with the f1 multiply with the duration of the signal that's all this is our signal number one let me copy the signal and paste and paste and after that we change the variable name f2 f2 f3 it's supposed to be f3 y3 okay all right okay we already create three different signal y1 y2 or y3 where all the signal having different frequency let me try to plot them and see how how they look like we can use the map lab command sub plot okay so plot we're going to have three row three one one okay plot what is the x axis value dt is the duration then y1 is the y axis then you can assign a color to the signal let's say it's going to be red color okay let me copy these two command and paste all right change the row it's supposed to be second row and this one's supposed to be third row and change the signal value as well y2 this one's supposed to be y3 all right save and run there you go we have the this is the y1 and this is y2 and this is y3 okay in this case if you count the number of cycle that present in this time duration is supposed to be 10 hertz okay in one second we're supposed to have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 there you go in one second we have a 10 oscillation which is equal to 10 hertz obviously going to be easy for this case we're going to identify the frequency how about in this case or how about the higher frequency how are we going to do that it's going to be very complicated and in this case we only have a, a smooth sinusoidal signal let's say we have a corrupted very high very low snr signal to noise ratio it's going to be very hard for us or if we have a more than uh, combination of this all three signal okay the next step is we're going to do that okay let's say we have a new signal give a name y4 which is combination of all three of them y1 plus y2 plus y3 how is going to look like okay let me try to plot and see what happened there okay for that i have to change all right i have to change this one's supposed to be four now all right change the row to four row instead of three we have four different signal this one's supposed to be y equal to all right this one's supposed to be y4 all right try to run and see what happened there there you go you can see there on the fourth row here we have the combination of one two three different signal here okay let's say let's say if you have this signal okay how are we going to identify what is the frequency of this signal it's going to be very hard right okay it's not easy because we don't have the information okay how are we going to do that this is in the time domain signal it's going to be very cumbersome very difficult for us to do that so that's why we need the fft so to proceed with the fft what you need 
the first thing is the length of the time donning signal. So let let us we give a name to the variable and FFT equal to length of y4. Alright. What's going to be? Obviously, the time duration is 2, the frequency sampling is 1000, going to be 2000. Let me select and press F9. Uh, length, I'm sorry. Alright, there you go. Press F9 again. There you go, you see we have 2000, alright? But, okay, let me put a comment there. Alright, okay, to have or to get a good a good frequency resolution in FFT, the number of the length of the signal must be equal to 2 to the power of, okay, the length of the signal. Otherwise, we won't get a good resolution of the signal. How are we going to change the length of the signal into to power of 2? Okay, we have to follow this instruction and FFT2 is a new variable name. We give a name 2 to the power of. P O W next I'm sorry next O two of N F F T Okay put it there length of signal in power of two try to select the line and press F9. There you go. Instead of 2000, you get the power of 2, which is a 2048. Let's say we change the duration here into higher duration, which is 5. What is going to be? Okay, let me comment this portion. Control R. Okay, and try to run and see what happened there. It's, okay, now we have the signal duration is 1000 times 5, which is 5000. Okay, the next the power of 2 after 5000 is supposed to be 8192 because before the 5000 the number of 2 is supposed to be 4096 so 4096 you can do here 4096 times 2 you're going to get 8192 all right okay now use the okay now you're going to convert to fft f equal to let me give a variable f f equal to FFT, the fu the function provided in MATLAB for fast Fourier transform. Okay, what is the signal that we want to convert? Y4, and assign the length and FFT2. All right, that's all. Now, how are we going to have a look? When we do the FFT in FF, we're going to have a two different number. We're going to represent the complex number. Okay, it's supposed to represent the magnitude and phase of the signal. Okay, let me try to plot. Okay, only the absolute part or magnitude part. All right, there you go. Okay, this is what we get. We get this is the length of the signal just now 8092. I'm sorry, 8192. And this is the frequency, three different peaks that we have that represent all the three signal that we have created but it seems we sum all of them but we still can separately identify what is the three different frequency that present in the y4 okay frequency is a symmetrical fft is a symmetrical so we're going to find mirror in the left hand side as in right hand side but we can just plot on the right on the left hand side and by eliminating the left hand side Okay, the right hand side, sorry. How are we going to do that? We're going to create another new variable. FFF equal to FF. Just choose the sample from 1 until and FF2 to divided by 2. That's all. So try to plot FFF here. Have a look. There you go. We only have one portion here. Okay, we already eliminate the second portion. Okay guys, this is the end of the first part. Try to continue watch my second part to see how I'm going to plot correctly the x-axis and normalize the amplitude. Thank you.
Pode.